Audio Log, Project of Nero. This is Dr. Miriam Mathis, Assistant Director of Neurocognitive Studies and Pharmacodynamics at OLA. It is 12.54 p.m. on August 17th, 2018. Where to start? <sighs> Since the end is near, perhaps the beginning is best. I remember when the drugs first hit the market. Oh my God, what am I saying? Of course I remember. Let me begin again. <clears throat> Okay, here goes. What if your memories, your every thought and experience, everything you ever learned could be kept? Logged, referenced, cross-referenced. Facts, details, knowledge, all available at your mental fingertips. That's what memory-enhancing drugs, meds for short, do. In the beginning, the drug was welcomed with open arms, <laughs> or should I say open minds. Meds were a scientific fortuity a byproduct of years of lab studies on a drug originally developed to reduce the symptoms of ADHD and later provided to assist in the failing memories of Alzheimer's patients. With the results of our clinical studies, we flew through the FDA approval process. When the drug first hit the market, it seemed like a godsend. The public ate it up and touted its benefits as if it was the cure for cancer. Of course, there was every chance it would be. The future was bright with meds. But memory has always been an inexact science. There have been plenty of studies that theorize this system or encourage that process, but there's never been a foolproof method to choose what you will remember and what you will forget. Meds fixed half the problem. Meds allowed you to remember everything. Everything. Memory binding on multiple levels created a phenomenon which kept all new memories and reinforced existing ones. It was so simple. Short-term, long-term, sensory. The drug triggered a synaptic response that fused the encoding with the retrieval, creating a permanent and accessible fount of memory. Within three months of over-the-counter release, the cumulative IQ of the nation soared by 25 points. Voracious for an academic, social, or personal edge, people were clamoring to learn, to read, to know, anything, everything. He who knew the most was surely the smartest. There was a revamping of the entire education system, pre-K through college. Standardized testing was no longer relevant. Not only were students paying attention, they were recalling what they'd been taught. Teachers were invigorated. We were all invigorated. Businesses prospered. Great advancements were projected. A modern miracle of science. Finally, a drug to benefit all of society. Unlike the athletic steroid scandal of the last decade, meds was encouraged. The advantage it provided was not seen as unfair, but equalizing. We should have never put it in the water. Anticipatory arrogance. We were going to save the world. The benefits of a perfect memory range from restaurant orders to never misplacing your keys to always knowing important dates and checkbook balances. You don't get lost. You nail that report, ace that test, and wow that crowd with your perfect speech. No longer could you forget to pay a bill, miss an appointment, or call your mother. Med's popularity was never more obvious than when the first lady endorsed them with her Just Say No campaign. She was one of the first to be taken down. Forgive my digression. It's nearly impossible to tell a linear tale when you remember every detail, and the details every detail. Believe me, that's where the devil lies. Meds are not addictive, but their abilities are. Once you've experienced 100% total recall, it's nearly impossible to go back to blue-collar memory. Meds went from prescription to OTC in record time. Available globally, it became a daily staple, and then they put it in the water. Of course, there were negative side effects, but they were minimal, oftentimes purely psychological, agitation, exhaustion, excitement. Those weren't the problem. The problem was the people on meds didn't actually learn anything. Their recollection was rote. Mimicry, watching or reading and recalling do not a doctor make, or chef, or mechanic, or lover. An experience lived is worth a thousand witnessed. We'd studied the drug for years, a decade, testing, tweaking, perfecting. We were too controlled, too focused on the science, the breakthroughs, our subjects overly sheltered. We did ourselves and society a grave disservice. 
With all of our collective scientific expertise, we neglected to note that memory is potentially 90% emotion and barely 10% fact. We'd bypassed passion for logic. Memories hold incredible power. What we remember is what we know. What we know is who we are. You may share a memory with another, but theirs is not yours. It's not the same. With meds, there came a sense of entitlement. I remember, therefore I am. Nobody said, I believe, or I think anymore, because they didn't. We knew things, regardless of fact or perspective, and that seemed enough. Then things went from tea time at the country club to power hour and Jerry Springer. At the height of civility, the likes of which had never before been experienced, the effects of meds suddenly turned ugly and vindictive. People touted mnemonic knowledge as fact, spewed recall and justified their actions. Relationships dissolved. Never forgetting an anniversary became never forgetting a quarrel. All wrongs, however slight, were remembered. Forgive and forget? You couldn't. Society imploded. What should have been a boon to civilization has become an intolerable bane. We tested for years. We were dedicated. We were thorough. We were short-sighted. We were wrong. There is a world war raging just outside my lab. They'll be here any minute. I'm the last of the responsible. They want to destroy me as I have destroyed them. Don't they realize I am one of them? No, no, that's not true. They don't want me dead. They want me to fix them. I can't fix them. The only cure is...